Hi and welcome to our video for the August newsletter. For this video I thought I would talk about tweeter manufacturing or driver manufacturing and it was really brought about by a post on our forum by a socket man who's a bit of a regular there and he was asking if we made our own drivers particularly the tweeter and uh, and where we made the tweeter. So uh, I thought I'd just sort of clarify that a bit and um, it really sort of prompted some talk between Andrew and I about doing a, a whole video on not just uh, the tweeter and, and sort of how and where it's made or a little bit of a factory tour on that but into the whole tweeter design and we ended up deciding that tweeter design would probably be a, a good topic for uh, a completely separate uh, video uh, perhaps a little later in the fall. So for now I'm just going to uh, talk a bit about the, the manufacturing and um, and, uh, and try and uh, just, just keep to that. Uh, really, I think there was a pretty big change in the manufacturing around 2008 for Axiom. Uh, prior to that, we, um, we had the uh, component parts made uh, to, to order, so they were our designs, but they were not made at our factory. Uh, some of them were made at our factory here in Canada, but uh, a lot of them were purchased on an OEM basis in uh, China and, and, and frankly we were never a hundred percent happy with that uh, so uh, in fact starting a few years before that going back all the way back to 2004 I started the process of uh, forming something called a WUFI which is a wholly owned foreign enterprise in China uh, it's a um, it's a company it's 100 percent owned by our Canadian company and uh, the idea was that we would set up and manufacture our own drivers in this uh, factory. And um, so it's called uh, Axiom Audio Shanghai, or uh, in Mandarin that would be Aikashima Yingchong Shanghai. And um, we really got everything set up, pretty much took into 2006, 2007, and by 2008 we were producing uh, uh, pretty much all the parts there, including the tweeter ourselves. And uh, so really I just got a couple of still shots that, um, that uh, I took earlier this year. And uh, the first shot on the screen we're going to put up here is really just a little view to motor assembly. This is um, uh, the T-oak magnet and top plate getting glued together and there's a, there's a jig while the glue dries. And, um, and then uh, the next shot is uh, of a uh, <coughs> tweeter voice coil. And um, I guess the thing that's a, a little bit sort of uh, uh, interesting about this is you'll notice that the, uh, the actual voice coil lead is terminated right at the voice coil and a uh, tinsel lead is uh, soldered on at that point. And this is very important for the longevity of a tweeter. If you, it's quite common to just sort of take the voice coil wire and extend it out across the, the terminal plate and solder it to the to the uh, wire lug, but um, this is really uh, fraught with problems, um, probably going to fail over time. Uh, so we, we go to the, uh, to the um, expense of uh, actually soldering on a little tinsel lead so that those lead wires don't break over time. Uh, in the next shot here, uh, this is just uh, really a, a jig that's <coughs> showing the how the voice coil is centered onto the, uh, the T-yoke and top plate assembly. And I think what's uh, unique about this, since we took over our own manufacturing, we were able to uh, make our own jigs. We uh, tooled them at, uh, at a local machine shop here in, in, in uh, Canada that had a very, very expensive CNC lathe. And we were able to make these jigs to extremely tight tolerances so that we could get the uh, voice coil in exactly the same spot in every tweeter. Um, and, and even beyond that, we actually make the tweeter in sets. So once that voice coil has been jigged in that top plate and T-yoke, it stays with that top plate and T-yoke until it's uh, completed and, um, and tested and, and sent to Canada. So and it's little details like this that we were really never able to to get done uh, buying products on an OEM basis. I mean, you know, uh, uh, 
a typical OEM driver manufacturer really wants to produce down an assembly line thousands and thousands of parts and and they're not really willing to start playing these sort of uh, games. They, they, they probably would think them to be a little bit of ridiculous quality level but it was important to us and we wanted to take that extra step because really in tweeter manufacturing it's um, it's not about the, the, the sort of cost of the parts. I, I mean you know there's T-yokes and magnets and top plates and uh, diaphragms and, and um, face plates and you know they're reasonably small and, and they cost what they cost. I mean we're already using a titanium dome which is a fairly expensive dome. So um, really what it comes down to is the care and attention in making every uh, single tweeter exactly as you want it. So holding a very close tolerance and, and that's it is easier to do these tolerances in drivers for sh in woofers for sure but in tweeters a little more difficult and you really have to go to these special links in order to accomplish that. In the next uh, picture here this is uh, you can see the sets being lined up and um, Hu and Lai are just actually um, they're just actually sort of lining up the magnets and all of the their, their associated uh, voice coils are sitting there. They're about to put the ferrofluid in. And um, the ferrofluid, again, we put that in with a, a very expensive uh, pump uh, that we bought in the United States from uh, Fluid Metering Inc., which allows us to put the ferrofluid into fractions of a microliter. And um, again, after the whole uh, idea of consistency. And then um, in our next shot here, this is uh, really just the final tweeters are now together with their face plates on and uh, they're ready for testing. Um, and then this is the um, this is the test box that every tweeter is tested in. Uh, it's really just a, an insulated square box with a microphone in the bottom and you can sort of see the foam piece sitting on on top there and that is that is on a spring-loaded arm so it holds the tweeter down into the box and then uh, the real magic of course is this uh, listening um, uh, measuring device which is hooked to a computer and it will do a series of tests all in one burst sweep to the tweeter so it will do an impedance it will do uh, amplitude, it'll do a buzz and rub, it'll do phase, it'll then present the operator with a pass or a fail. Uh, the pass or fail parameters were all written by, uh, by Andrew here um, to, uh, to the tolerance we wanted to uh, try and keep. And uh, so that's really uh, how an Axiom tweeter is made and uh, like I say we'll get into a lot more about how it's actually designed a little later in the fall in another video. Thanks so, so much for watching.